Welcome to the second part of In Touch. This is Crime Beat, and I'm Officer Don, along with Fayette Commonwealth's attorney, Ray Larson, who's looking super dapper today. You got a trial or something today? You look good. I'll clean up. I've always got a trial. Yeah, I, yes, it's true. But you know, I'm always on edge. The reason I know is because you've got the, the hanky in your pocket, all <clears throat> stuffed all pretty, so it's got to be something a little more formal. It's be a big trial. No. no. my. F you know, it's interesting. My father-in-law... When I got married, one of the things he told me, he used to run a little clothing store in Eminence, Kentucky. His name is Jack Helber. He's one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And uh, he used to run this little clothing store in downtown Eminence. And he told me, he said, Ray, you're, gonna, you're a lawyer. He said, let me give you some advice about clothes. Always buy the best suits you can that you can afford. Mm -hmm. He said because you're going to be wearing them and he said uh, and though if you buy cheap suits they'll look it shortly. Uh, he said so keep them buy them to keep their shape. He said but as it wrote the other thing is is that you can dress them up or dress them down and this handkerchief that you're talking about yeah. this white handkerchief that's as a result of him telling me to dress, dress it up. up. Keep it classy. Well, it's hard to do on a prosecutor's budget. You know, it's not like you're one of these big defense attorneys making this gazillion dollars a year. You know, I mean, Well, I, let me tell you something. I'm nothing but a poor, pitiful public servant. But we appreciate what you do very much. Okay, enough of that. What's well, going on this week? <laughs> well, <clears throat> one of the things that, um, that we're going to report this next week on our web page which is lexingtonprosecutor.com and I want to particularly I want to pitch that because this show in touch is on lexingtonprosecutor.com we videotape it uh, Caroline Dunn is the, the young woman from our office that comes in and, and tapes it and puts it on the our web page but we have a lot of other criminal justice news and opinions and it's a very opinionated web page and I'm not the least bit ashamed of that uh, but <clears throat> this next week we're going to begin to feature death row inmates in Kentucky uh, people seem to be fascinated by that bunch of convicted killers um, and we're going to talk about it. <clears throat> Most people, well, let's use you as an example. Of course, you're not really a good example because you got lots and lots of knowledge about crime, criminals, and law enforcement. But is it fair to say that most people believe that the vast majority of people on Kentucky's death row are African American? Yeah, it has certainly spun that way in the media. Mm -hmm. They'll say that it's that most of the people mm -hmm. on death row are black. That's what mm -hmm. they say. Right. Well, <clears throat> here's what we're going to find. There are 34 people on death row in Kentucky. That group of 34 people is responsible for murdering 58 people, victims. Now, the, the racial makeup of the people on death row is... 82 uh, percent, over 82 percent, are white. Mm -hmm. 28 of the people on Kentucky's death row are white. Uh, only five are black. Uh, that's 14, about 14 and a half percent. One is Hispanic. Now, we have and 33 out of the 34 are men and one is a woman. Uh, the woman uh, is from Fayette County. We prosecuted her, and Virginia Caudle and Jonathan Goforth murdered uh, Loretta White, mm -hmm. uh, put her in the, in the trunk of her car, broke into her car, burglarized her house, robbed her, killed her, beat her to death, put her in the trunk of her car, took her car out into the rural area of Lexington and lit it on fire. Um, 
And so what happens is um, we tried them. They were both convicted of uh, intentional murder and kidnapping and burglary and that sort of thing made it an aggravated murder. And as a result, the jury gave them the death penalty, recommended the death penalty, and they're on death row. Now one of them is in Pee Wee Valley and the other one is uh, Jonathan Goforth is in Eddieville, which is where death row is. Well, and since a lot of people will try to use uh, the death, death penalty as a race baiting kind of thing, let's break it down another way too. Uh, most of the, the victims uh, of the, the white people that are on death row are white, sure. correct? Most of the victims of the black people who are on death row are black, correct? That's correct. So the people on death row are put there uh, because they victimize victims of their own race most of the time. Not that it matters. You don't care as a prosecutor. I mean, in fact, in the case of the female that's on death row, the suspect is white, and the victim in that case was, was black. black, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the race thing just doesn't work. It has nothing to do with it. I mean, in fact, if one was to, to not sentence someone to death, uh, in this this black on black crime, you would give the appearance that you didn't care about black victims, but you do. The same way you care about white victims, Hispanic victims, it doesn't matter. I mean, they either committed the crime or they didn't. The race of the victim doesn't matter. The race of the suspect doesn't matter. Did you do it or not? And if you did, do you, under Kentucky law, are you eligible for the death penalty? And has the jury decided, after looking at all their options, they don't have to give you the death. They can give you, they've got an array of options. They're never forced to give you the death penalty. In fact, more often than not, they don't. Uh, after all that's been considered, did you receive this, that, this death sentence from a jury? And if that's the case, then what does race have to do with it? Nothing. Well, it doesn't, but it becomes a, a political issue. It's what it becomes. <clears throat> One of the, you know, one of the most misunderstood uh, issues that we deal with is when does the death pen, when is the death penalty an option in a homicide case? Well, first of all, it's only an option in a homicide case. Mm -hmm. Homicide has to be part mm -hmm. of the crime that you committed, which a lot of people don't realize that. We don't sentence people to death uh, for committing theft or whatever in this country. You have to do the most mm -hmm. heinous of crimes. In fact, uh, to even be eligible, to, here, here's some of the things that, that make you that, that are not eligible. Uh, you know, I could plan to kill someone. For, I could plan it for a year in Kentucky. I could draw out the map, write down a log of what I'm going to do, and then after I do it, write about how much I enjoyed doing it. And guess what? That in itself will not make me eligible. For that premeditated murder is not part of the mix in Kentucky for the death penalty. It's not. A lot of people believe it is. What do you have to have to be eligible for the death penalty in <clears throat> Kentucky? How bad does it have to get? Well, the death penalty only applies in murders in which what they call an aggravated circumstance occurs. That's only a limited number of murders. Uh, for example, um, a murder that's committed by a person who has a prior conviction for uh, a homicide, a capital case. Uh, a murder which occurs in the commission of a robbery in the first degree. Okay. If I walk into this station and put a gun on you and say, give me your money, the question, the, the issue in the mind of the armed robber, it occurs every time there's an armed robbery. Do I take the money and run? or do I take the money, kill the witness, and run? We don't want anybody to rob anybody. But if you're gonna rob somebody, at least don't kill the witness. Because if you do kill the witness, it becomes an aggravated case and we will seek the death penalty. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a burglary in the first degree. A murder that occurs in the course of a burglary, or a rape, or a sodomy in the first degree. A murder that occurs using a destructive device, a bomb. Tim Tune in to the following stations every Sunday to hear full episodes of In Touch with Ray the DA and Don Evans.